The quiet country town, St Andrew's Church in the middle of Farnham, very far removed from the modern Formula One paddock, from the noise, from the hustle and bustle. But today Farnham is marking the 50th anniversary of, of the legendary Mike Hawthorne, the Formula One driver, who just weeks after being the first Briton to win the Formula One World Championship in 1958, just a few weeks later and just a couple of miles from here, was tragically killed in a road traffic accident. And today, many of his cars, many of his friends, some of his rivals, are gathered together to celebrate his life. And I'm standing here in the car park with Michael Ballard with an extraordinary collection of motor cars. Michael, you've endeavoured for, what, a couple of years, I think, to, to make this happen. What is the purpose of it? It's been the last two months. It's been a lot of hard work from a lot of people on the team that put it together. It was all Paul Roach's idea and I got roped into helping to do it. But yes, you're right, we have a collection of fantastic cars here today. We're very proud to have them. And a lot of good, nice people have come along. So Sterling's coming, Damon Hill's coming, Tony Brooks is coming along. And we have a good cross-section of cars that were associated with Mike Hawthorne in his short but very successful life. It's really more a celebration of his life than, than just marking the anniversary of his death. The, the catalyst was the anniversary of his death, but we are making it a celebration. That, this is to celebrate a great racing driver from the 50s, a man who sadly had a very short life, but a very successful life. And we are all here as fans to mark that and celebrate his life. And most of these cars will be going around the town a little bit later to mark that life. As far as I'm aware, if they all start, they're all going around the town, yes. <laughs> Hundreds of fans and people from around the town are expected to gather here today to celebrate uh, that illustrious career, six years in Formula One, winning virtually everything uh, against the cream of the world's drivers. And already we've uh, just spoken briefly to the vicar who's taking the service, who well remembers Mike Hawthorne coming to his school uh, late in 1958. Many in the town have passed by, stopped, to say how much they remembered Mike Hawthorne, how popular he was in the town, uh, and he owned a garage in the town, and uh, a lot of people were pleased to see him come back after winning each race. So Sterling Moss, you, you raced with him, against him. Do, do you have very fond memories of Mike? I mean, there's a particular instance that, that comes back to you over and over again of your friendship with him. Oh, I mean, Mike and I, we, we you know, on the track we'd fight like hell. But, oh, no, we were good friends. People wouldn't believe it. They couldn't think, how can you possibly do that? But, I mean, I one thing I'm very pleased about, and that is I managed to talk to Mike and Pete Collins into coming into the Alpine Rally with me because we had fantastic time. I mean, I said to him, i get you a 1,000 pounds to do this, and all we have to do is go down to the south of France for five days, chase girls, and then go on the rally. I mean, what else could I offer him, you know? <laughs> slightly indebted to to his legacy and um, he sort of set the tone I think for for a lot of drivers after him so probably influenced my dad you know um, and showed that it could be done but the aspirations of each pull on the next generation and I suppose your dad would have been just a little bit behind in generations but you were a late starter as well I seem to remember I was a late starter but um, you know I think that you do need to be young to be to be uh, to be able to give your all to motor racing. I think it's, it definitely is a cha the change that comes about when you get uh, later on. But um, Mike uh, was someone who threw himself completely, I think, uh, from what I know of Mike, uh, he threw himself into it completely, just like Sterling did. So they were, they were, able, or they were able to invest everything they had into being competitive. And um, I think that um, that's, that's why they were, you know, such such competitive drivers uh, in their heyday. Now, Mike won the world championship in 1958 in slightly controversial circumstances, and you stood up for him at a point where his points were likely to be taken away for one race because he was alleged to have pushed the car. Fifty years later, is that a decision that, that you have had a moment's regret for? No, not a bit. I mean, that's what should be done. Is what I do now, and. Uh, you know, no regrets at all. I mean, I happen to like Mike. We, we fought on the track and so on, but uh, he was a great guy, and what he did was ridiculous. I mean, to, to try and penalise a man because he gets a push start is ridiculous, and, and I still feel it. But it got to the end of the season, and, and he beat you in the World Championship by one point. You several times then subsequently were runner-up in the World Championship. But do you not regret it at all? Is that, is that your sense of fair play? That's how you see things? 
No, it has to be like that, frankly. I mean, it, it's ridiculous to... I mean, regu regulations are made... I hope to imp improve our sport, not to, de to de you know, be detrimental. So what I did, I think, was correct. I did it again, and and certainly uh, Mike deserved to win anyway. I mean, I think there were certain times when, uh, you know, th if the reverse happened, he'd have done the same for me. I'd like to hope. Mike elected to retire almost immediately. He'd won the World Championship, and I think we know there were some health reasons behind that. But in your case, you also decided enough was enough not long after winning that World Championship and that you wanted to go off and do some other things? Well, um, yes, I mean, it wasn't anything to do with, um, it wasn't the same situation, I would say, as, as, as driving in the 50s. You know, you, you, you really were rolling the dice every time you got in the car. And when I was driving, although it was dangerous, it was a lot safer and the cars uh, were much more robust. But I was just getting too old and slow. So it was a very, very simple decision. It was that uh, it retired me rather than the other way around.